So far, there hasn't been much positive news about hair dyes because in reality, they all use harsh chemicals. I'm sure it's disappointing if you're health conscious but still want to cover up your grays or change up your style. The good news is that there's natural alternatives that can provide you with both benefits. There's so many options out there, but henna by far is the most popular. It's been used for its strong lasting dye properties for centuries. In fact, it's still a staple for many cultures around the world. Henna is a small tree originally native to North Africa, parts of Asia, Australia, and India. The dye is actually extracted from the leaves. Once the plant matures, the leaves are removed, dried, and grounded into a powder. So here's how henna works on your hair. The molecule in henna responsible for dyeing your hair is called lawson. It's referred to as a coating dye because its molecular size is too large to easily penetrate your hair strands. Unlike other natural powders, henna takes some time and a little effort to release its dye molecule. A warm and slightly acidic environment helps to release the color. So the day before you plan on dyeing your hair, mix your henna powder with pure lemon juice to a clumpy consistency like mashed potatoes. Then add room temperature water and mix until it's thick and creamy. Cover it real tight so air doesn't get in and let it sit in a really warm area for about 24 hours so the dye can have enough time to release. For best results, completely saturate your hair with the mixture. Feel free to pile it on, then wrap your hair in saran wrap and let it sit for about two to three hours. The dye molecule in henna has a strong attraction to the protein in your hair. It firmly sticks to the surface and even underneath lifted and damaged cuticle layers. With consistent use, the large molecules will slightly weigh your hair down, create a bit of a stretch and make it feel thicker. Over time, the color will build and become more and more obvious. Using indigo after henna is a great natural alternative for covering grays. Unlike henna, indigo works best with just water. It doesn't have to sit and can be used right away. It's tempting, but it's best not to have the two powders in the same mixture. Using them separately or stacking them will yield darker results. All this obviously takes more effort than chemical dyes, but it's a safer alternative to ensure that you don't introduce harmful chemicals to your body and potentially suffer permanent hair loss. Unfortunately, due to its increased popularity, manufacturers often mix in chemicals like lead acetate, silver nitrate, metallic salts, copper, or even PPD. And for those of you who watched the previous videos on hair dyes, a lot of these things are found in powerful chemical dyes like permanent and semi-permanent hair dyes and can cause a lot of damage to your hair. And due to the lax laws and regulations in the countries where henna is produced, the full ingredients, if any, are usually not even found on the box. But you're not completely helpless because there's a few things you can look out for to tell if the henna you purchased is pure. These aren't 100% foolproof but can help you avoid using harsh chemicals unknowingly. Henna only has one color molecule, which is reddish orange. If you find a henna product that claims to dye your hair any other color, then it's most likely not pure. If it claims to be natural black henna, then it's most likely mixed with a serious chemical called PPD. Products containing PPD can cause major damage to your skin and scalp. Its toxins seep into your body and can cause cancer cells to develop. Other than being called natural black henna, PPD laced henna can be spotted in other ways. It oxidizes easily and becomes black, so the powder may look a lot darker than expected. Mixing a sample of it with water and letting it sit for a few minutes will help you see the black PPD even better. Since leaves are green, a lot of us are more attracted to powder that's bright green. When in reality, once a green leaf is plucked and dried, it loses a lot of its brightness. Many of these manufacturers will use green dye or add sand that has been dyed with harsh chemicals to give a false impression of freshness. Henna powder is naturally slightly dull green and fades to brown as it loses its potency. So watch out for powders that appear bright green. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Out of all six of these hennas, 
Which one is most likely laced with chemicals and why? Here's a clue. There's two possible options. Leave your answer below for a chance to win a free real protein treatment. The winner will be selected randomly and announced on Saturday, June 27th on all the Green Beauty social media pages. As always, you must be subscribed to the Green Beauty channel on YouTube and follow all the Green Beauty social media pages, including Pinterest. You can find all their links in the Green Beauty channel YouTube page in the banner section. So this video completes the whole color series. We went over the details of all types of hair dyeing methods. If you currently color your hair using any of these methods, make sure to click the link to freshen up on the facts. And if you're trying to decide on the right method for you, I hope this series on hair dyes will help you reach a clearer decision. For more helpful tips with pictures, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.